Hi, Mike. Hi, Rob. Can you hear us okay? I can hey. hear Can you hey, hear me? Hey. It sounds like you're both there at the same time, so I'll take that as a yes for both of you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mike and Rob, hi, it's Bob speaking. Do you have any video? Uh, I didn't join with video. Do you want us to? Yes, please. Will do I, then. Uh, I probably have to go out and come in again to do that. Oh, hi, Sarah. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Mike, hi. Hello. All right. Got you. Got you on video as well. Mike, uh, when we get going, I'll be asking everyone to put their mics on mute. I assume yep. you know how to do that, don't you? Yeah, no worries. Good, you're fully trained. Oh. <laughs> uh, on the hoof. Uh, Rob, hi. Can you just see the top of your head? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Got it. Uh, Rob, I'll be asking everyone to put their microphones on mute when we get started. Uh, and you as well, Dyer. Hi. Sure. Do you both know how to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, let's get started. There are two protocols, please. One is put your microphone on mute. And the second is when you want to enter the conversation or you want to say something, please indicate to me. I only have a small picture, so just raising your finger probably won't be good enough. You probably need to wave your hand or something. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, you can necessarily join the conversation, but we'll try and run it as we normally run the parish council meeting, which is that rather than just taking comments from members of the public at the beginning, we'll take comments as we go through. But you'll have to bear with me. If I deem the comments not relevant, then we'll either send you into a separate room or we'll delete you or something. We'll see how it goes. So um, let's make a start with, I hope you've all seen or you've had the agenda. Uh, we've got no apologies, so that's absolutely fine. The minutes of the last meeting, technically the last proper meeting, legal meeting, was on the 21st of January. We did approve the minutes uh, in March when we couldn't meet, but that wasn't legal, so we just need to approve those minutes now. I assume you all agree, just nod if you agree. Okay, that's fine. Uh, matters arising are dealt with elsewhere. Uh, Keith, do we have any reports from the police, Devon County Council or East Devon District Council? No, none at all. Okay. Public discussion. Are there any things that members of the public want to raise that you think um, might not be on the agenda? I, when you raise it, I may say, I may say, uh, Dan, sorry, you're saying, do you want to say something? Yes, I've had contact with a, a member of the parish who's concerned about HGVs using the um, the hill up over Stafford Hill, Pidsley's and a co-op lorry, I believe, which I know has been a recurrent issue over the the last probably 20 years. But she went so far as to contact the, the co-op depot, I believe, about the, uh, the use and... Um, I think she's spoken to the police and she said that Darren England was going to be contacting a member of the parish council, which I assume would be Keith or yourself, but he obviously hasn't got through to... Yes, yes he has. Um, Darren emailed me about a week ago and I replied saying that I had not had any um, problems. No, no one from the public had contacted me to say we have a problem in the village. It was mentioned to me and I was asked to raise it with yourselves, so I've, okay. I've raised it now. Okay, you raised it. Thanks, Dan. Um, Sarah, Mike, Rob, any sort of general comments you, you want to make? Just indicate which one of you is going to speak first, if, if you are at all. <laughs> no. No, no okay. comments. Okay, okay. Can, I, can I pick up with you on certain... If there's something as we go through, then just... Um, just indicate to me and hopefully I'll be watching the screen at the right time and not the agenda, which is below the screen. Uh, planning report, Edwina. Uh, yeah, planning report. Since we last met, um, we've had three planning applications. 
uh, one for Western Cottage Broad Henbury, alterations to outbuilding and the extension at the rear of the cottage. It's a listed property and we supported the uh, application. Starlings Cottage, also in Broad Henbury, is a single storey uh, rear extension and we supported that. Number one, Collerton Cross at the corner uh, is the construction of a detached uh, garage. Um, Councillor Haugel and I actually visited that premises because we were unsure as to the um, actual size of the building. We supported the footprint, i.e. Um, the uh, square footage on the ground. It actually built the concrete platform so we could see that. But what we've not done is supported the height of the building. It's very high and it's like having another house being built in the yard. And it worked very well with just the two of us going. Okay, Edwina, were your height comments taken into account? Because actually it's built now, isn't it? No, it's not built. Well, the height is, the height is determined, I think. Uh, you're on the wrong property, Bob. Um, number one is the one next to the corner. You're Eight absolutely seven. right. You're right. I'm on the wrong property. My apologies. Okay. Anything else to report? No, no, that's R it. Uh, we have got another one coming uh, today, which I'll speak to the councillors about later. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, correspondence. There are two items of correspondence not dealt with elsewhere. Um, Mike, I had an email exchange from you about East Devon District Council's heritage strategy and later in the agenda I've, I think I will be suggesting a way in which I can incorporate it in the neighbourhood plan but remind me if I forget to to mention it there. Hey, thank you. Um, we also had a letter initially from a parishioner and then subsequently from four others concerning the use of weed killer in a lane uh, near Kurzweil. Um, Nick investigated this, Nick tracked down the person uh, and it's been reported to all of the relevant agencies. Uh, most of the complainants to us were happy with that action but the original, original complainant wasn't happy with the action we took so nobody knew Nick was involved but thank you Nick for investigating it and following up and finding, tracking down who did it. Uh, Keith actually got all the praise and I got all the criticism, so it probably worked quite well, actually. It makes a change. Um, we don't have any legal requirement for environmental protection, but it has been reported to all the relevant authorities. And of course, just at the moment, no particular authority was too interested in it. And, you know, that's just the way the world is at the moment. They were busy doing other things. But anyway, we've taken the... We've taken more than the action that you might have expected from us. Uh, neighbourhood plan resolutions. Resolution one is to adopt the Blackdown Hills design guide. It looks like this. You've had the you've had the web link, and in fact, you were given a hard copy of it in November. Any questions at all about that, or can we go straight to proposal and acceptance? Looks like we can go straight to proposal and acceptance. Mike, if we incorporate, uh, when, when I incorporate that into the neighbourhood plan, the reason is to give us a little bit more protection. There is a whole chapter in there about heritage. And I suddenly thought, actually, there's a really good link here to link it into East Devon District Council's heritage strategy and to do it in such a way that gives a little bit more clout to the heritage strategy than might otherwise have been possible. So I think we'll do it like that because the two things together just give us a little bit more leverage than we might otherwise have. The difficulty with the Blackdown Hills neighbor, uh, the Blackdown Hills design guide is it can only apply where there is 
and I'm sorry for the word, but this is East Devon's word, intervisibility. In other words, they can see us from them and we can see them from us. So it would certainly apply around Broad Hembury and it would probably apply to part of Kurzweil, but it wouldn't really apply to any of the, uh, the rest of the hamlets. But I think that's probably the best we can do. It's certainly the strongest thing we can do at the moment. So that would be my proposal on that. So we will record that we have formally accepted that and it will be incorporated into the neighbourhood plan. Unless I see anyone shaking their head or jumping up and down or grab their glass of wine or something. No, looks all right. Dyer, you moved, are you all right? Okay, good. Um, resolution two is to formally approve the setting up of the subcommittee to advise on whether or not, and if so, how we should set up a community land trust. Since um, we advertised in the newsletter for people, uh, two people, in fact, one is Sarah, who's in this, this uh, meeting, and Rob is the other, uh, asked if they could join the group and have been accepted. And actually last week, Steve Chipperfield asked me if he could join the group, and I also accepted that. Um, Mike Drew is already on the group. So what we, since this is, a, this is a subcommittee of the parish council, which will be chaired by me, yeah, I'll come to you in a sec, Viv, hang on. Um, then we have to formally approve it setting up. Viv, go ahead. Yeah, just a question about how large is that subgroup now, that subcommittee now with those extra people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 people. Okay. I don't think it should be any bigger, otherwise it becomes a little bit unwieldy. Well, once we have formally set it up in this meeting, I don't think we should, we can't actually accept any new members, so it's got to be frozen. The thing is, being a subcommittee, any member of the parish council is entitled to turn up to it. I mean, I prefer you not just to randomly turn up from meeting to meeting, but you are entitled to turn up. The two formal parish council reps are Edwina and Adam, who asked to be on it when we first discussed it. Can you just tell us who the 13 are then, apart from Adam, Edwina, Sarah, yep. Mike, Rob? Uh, it's Mike Drew, Mike Drew, Steve Chipperfield, Bill Siverwright, Tina Gray, Adam and Edwina, Sarah Clark, Rob Phillips, Dougie Allen, Andrew Eaton Hart, James Reese, Sarah Eaton Hart, and myself. Okay. Now, all those people have already been sent some pre reading material. Uh, as has the Parish Council, which is the material we receive from the National Community Land Trust. It's a document and also there's a, a document which is the uh, the rules of the Beer Association. And to be honest, had we been in, difficult, in different circumstances, then we would have invited the person who set up the Beer CLT to come and talk to us about it. I mean, we may still be able to do that. So just at the moment, the, the purpose of the group is to advise us what to do and what sort of legal format to set up. It is categorically not to approach landowners to start asking for land or anything like that. That will be the community land trust that does it. And when the community land trust is formally constituted, if that's what we decide to do when it's referred back to us, then I can no longer chair it and I cannot be a member because it will be separate from the parish council. So the group, if any of the members are still then on the group, or new members want to join and become trustees, then they will have to elect their own chairman. And that's how it would go forward. So at this stage, it's a group of people who will wade through the rather tortuous alternative legal formats that we could, that we could set up. And if you approve it tonight, which I'll be asking you in a minute, the first meeting will be using this medium on Thursday evening, which Adrian has kindly kindly agreed to facilitate host and uh, work for me. So I need a, a resolution please from someone or I need a proposal from someone and a seconder. I'm happy to propose it. Uh, so Edwina's seconding, seconding, okay. What we will do, since there'll be no one taking minutes at this subcommittee, we'll do what we're doing this evening, Aid, which is to record the whole meeting. Yeah, no problem. Yep. 
I mean, technically, a subcommittee is not is not open to the public to attend, although that's at our discretion. But since it's all going to report back to the parish council anyway, and the parish council meeting is open, what I suggest we do is we just make the recordings available to, to every parish councillor so they can hear what's going on if they want to, which seems the most open and fair way of, of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Have yes, sir. time, uh, please. Have uh, got time for Thursday. 7.30 on Thursday. Thank you. So welcome, Sarah, Mike and Rob. You're um, now on for life. <laughs> well, you could make a decision about that later. Um, the third resolution is to provisionally set aside a call facility to fund the work of the subcommittee if we need it. The subcommittee may decide that rather than borrowing, stealing or just lifting the legal constitution from someone else, we should properly seek legal advice to do that. And that will be a cost. Uh, Edwina and I both hope that the cost of that can be recovered from a grant, but that may take a little time and it may not be successful. So my proposal is that we set aside 3000 pounds to enable the subcommittee to do its work quickly. Though those monies will be subject to the normal completely standard approval processes, but it's just to clear that if the subcommittee decides that it needs to seek legal advice, then it can actually start whilst we work out how to get the grants to do it. I realise we have never ever, in my time on the Parish Council, done this before, so any questions about it? Uh, Viv, go ahead. Yeah, just how did you arrive at that figure? Have you taken advice on legal costs? I know what the legal costs were for the uh, conveyancing on the car park and I know what the guy was advising us for the formal agreement with the Memorial Hall, which we decided not to go ahead with. So I thought, let's just pick a number. Okay. Uh, Sarah, you wanted to say? Um, have you got a feel for how long it should take us to decide what legal format we want to go with? I suppose the honest answer, Sarah, is it depends how much work you've done before the meeting. <laughs> right. If you can quote the whole of that 60 page document verbatim, we'll make huge progress. <laughs> right. The, the decision is not that there are four choices, as you will know. The decision mm. is quite straightforward. What we just have to be very clear on is what purpose are we going to use it for and what would be the best vehicle which would give the most democratic representation and do we want to set it up in the early stages in such a way that would enable um, uh, parishioners shares in it? So, you know, we just need to advise the parish council how that should be constituted. Um, yeah, I mean, it's probably a for discussion for Thursday rather than tonight. But the route, you, you can go a very simple route, which is then easy to change down the line or you know you can start thinking about do we want to try um go down the charity route because of the uh, okay so okay sarah let me sorry let me interrupt you let's take that on thursday evening yeah yeah no i agree um viv were you suggesting do you want to propose a, a lower number i'm happy with that uh no, not particularly, um, because I have no um, particular knowledge. I was just wondering how you'd arrived at that figure. Um, given our precepts 8,000 and looking at our balance, that's quite a large amount of our reserves. I'm just... It is, yeah. Dyer? I was just going to say, you're not going to get very far with um, less than 1,500, because you probably want an initial advice and then something to follow up. So I think 3,000 is probably about right. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm happy with that. I'll take that advice. From somebody who actually knows. Uh, <laughs> I said it was a guess, Viv. Um, so I will propose it then. Do I have a seconder, please? Thank you. Do, does does anyone not support this? Because I need to know if you don't, and then I can talk with you separately. If you're uncomfortable about it, come back to me. Because I know it's a slightly um, and Edwina and I are both hoping that we'll cover this from grants. Viv will come on to the budget the expenditure a little bit later so that might sort of that might reassure you a bit when we get there. Okay and then the final thing is thank you I 
what I will now try and do, probably not tomorrow, is sit down and do a fundamental redraft of the neighbourhood plan, which will include in it BC1, BC2 and BC3, which Sally and I managed to negotiate with East Devon District Council, as well as East Devon's heritage strategy, as well as the design guide for the AOMB, and as well as all the other things. And since so much of it is a bit out of date now, quite a lot of it will have to be rewritten. Um, I will also rewrite the compliance audit, which is basically the document which says how we've complied with the law. And given that all of those references have changed over the years, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to have to look it up anyway to do the, do the document, so I can write that as well. And then I will need someone separately to volunteer to do the communications audit, write the communications audit for me, which is the storyline of who we've talked to and when and how we held meetings and what we published and so on, so on, so on, what was said. So if someone could come back to me, I'm not going to do that as well, because that's that would look a bit like a doing too much stuff. But we're nowhere near that yet. We, I need to get the thing redrafted. Any sort of general questions on the neighbourhood plan at all? OK. Uh, climate alleviation ideas. When we discussed this by email, um, quite a few of you thought, you know, there was actually more critical stuff going on in the world right now. But interestingly, the other stuff which is going on in the world right now has, in a strange sort of way, brought the climate issues to the fore. So I was just wondering, just to take something off the list, A, do you remember you were really you had a good idea and you were keen on the issue of branded mugs and we linked that with the free water pump. Yeah, it was one of the ideas, yeah. Um, I know that was just one of the ideas. I was just wondering if you'd be willing to work with me on that one. The reason I'm saying that is when we raised it with Neil Parrish, he got really excited and said he would get uh, Southwest Water to give the water free and blah, 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 blah. So I think we just call on him to do that. And then we can have a sort of electronically control, controlled tap somewhere and they can get the branded Broad Henbury Parish Council water bottles from somewhere in the village. The, I mean, that, that, that uh, idea for the, the drinking water tap did come down sort of somewhere halfway down the list. The, on, we had 32 responses in the end. Uh, the most popular was the start of the tree nursery at Broad Henbury Primary School. Uh, followed by the, the parish forest, then the repair clinic and the green electricity buying group. So in terms of responding to what, uh, you know, we had been uh, told by our parishioners, you know, the, the tap as it was, uh, was, was down the list. But uh, yeah, I mean, if, if Neil wants to throw some money around whilst he's still there. <laughs> uh, um, hey, that's true. On the first one, actually, Adam had started it before we did the list and, you know, yeah. Adam is the best person to do that, so we had started. The difficulty is that each of these projects, these small projects, they need someone to take it on and champion it. And I was kind of hoping that some parishioners who are not parish councillors might actually be so enthused by something on the list that they would volunteer to do it and we'd support them, as opposed to you know us having to do it all. Because the other things on that list actually are quite a lot of work. The repair, repair cafe, the one in Hemioc is a huge amount of work and is really successful. The community generation project is pretty epic. I know, Adam, that was you were keen on that, but it's quite a big thing to do. And things like composting bins and um, what was the other thing that was quite things that were really quite easy to do. None of our parishioners thought that they really wanted those, unfortunately. Well, the, the yeah, the, I mean, the clo there was a clothing recycling bin at the Memorial Hall, which came out, you know, as a very popular one. Um, I had a quick look and to see who would, who would offer one, but it's just, you know, there's, there's nobody who really does it that I can I can certainly find. Um, so that you know that that already didn't look like a you know much of a goer. Um, Community allotments that came up as, as being a very popular idea, but where and you know whose land and so on, uh, that, that that wasn't quite answered. Um, with, with the green electricity buying group thing, I mean that could be something as similar. Even if you don't set up a green electricity a proper buying group, you could uh, potentially put forward an idea, 
you know, because I know Adam had done some work on that because there's there's green electricity and there's green electricity. Was that right, Adam? You know, you could, some people were a little bit more kosher, for want of a better word. Yeah, go yeah. ahead, Adam. You could certainly um, provide a bit more information about the different companies in a leaflet and that could be given out through the parish. So that could make a start and get it in people's minds that maybe they think they're buying green, but they're not buying green because it's um, the certificates of green electricity are actually being traded between the companies. So they're not um, green at source. So um, we could do a little bit more work on that and um, provide, start the ball rolling on that with um, an information thing. Um, on the repair clinic, that could be a way of involving par parishioners because you need a lot of people who are good at repairing things. And everybody's good at, you know, someone might be able to change a tap washer, someone might be able to repair a computer or a bike, and you need to get them all together. So that could be a call out to parishioners to get involved in something, obviously not at the moment, but it um, could be something for the future. Um, you do, Adam, it's right. You do need those skills, but you really need someone to organise it, coordinate it, fix it, urge them, follow them up, make it happen. You do, you do. Um, my brother's been involved in uh, organising a repair clinic in Axminster, so um, I can have a word with him. He quite enjoyed doing it, actually, and it was quite successful. But um, obviously at the moment it's a bit difficult, but it could be something for people to look forward to, and we could start, um, you know, I can have a look, at, look into that and report back. Happy to do that. Okay, Adam, I think your idea about putting together a pack of information about green energy is quite, it, it's quite a sort of, um, it's not a particularly interventionist thing for us to do, but it's quite a good way of starting in a reasonably low key and resource effective way. So I think, I think that's a good one. And Aid, you and I perhaps can talk a bit more about the water thing if we get a... Would, would the whole committee be on board with that, do you think, Edwina? Well, we'd, we'd have to ask, but I think they would. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, the clothing recycling, the only people I can think of who would do that is the Salvation Army. Yeah, yeah, okay. Viv? I think most people tend to do it when they're doing their weekly shop. Well, you know, they'll they just do. go to the recycling bin and chuck it in there. And to be yeah. honest with you, it'll just, you know, it would, it would look... You know, messy. Messy. Okay, yeah. Viv? Viv? Yeah, can I just ask where on the list, can you remind me where on the list the allotments and composting idea came? Uh, composting, the, the distributing and free composting bins was quite high. 40% um, of people were happy with that. I've just got the answers up here. It was one joint or two, joint third, joint fourth. Right. This, um, with the recycling bin for clothes. I've, I've been to see the allotments at Willand, which are really very impressive, but they also have a composting system there as part of the allotments, which works really well. And they've got a really good setup of producing their own compost and then selling it to people who are not allotment holders as well. So that's, that's an interesting one. But as you say, land is the issue. Land I just wonder about there, any of the land. I'd, Sorry, I just wonder about any of the land. Okay, Viv, we're losing you. You're breaking up, so. No well. response to that. Uh, it's because, uh, Viv, it's yeah, because. Up, oh, right. Sorry. It's yeah. because we lost you. It bro broke up. Someone's Which turn. did you get? Just the very ending when you were saying something. Okay. I just wondered if the land to the other side of the car park is any good for allotmenting and compost making. Sorry, which land? The other side of which car park? Uh, the other side of the Hall car park, going down towards the river. Um, out of the question. I'm not even going to start discussing that. Sorry. Right, okay. It's just not a feasible thing for us to even discuss, I don't think. It's far too complicated at the moment. Any, so I think what we could do, um, I think we should keep reviewing this list regularly. I think we just need to have um, 
discussions with each other on particular things just to see if we could take things forward. I don't, I wouldn't actually put the composting and the allotments thing on the back burner of it. If I think it's a good idea, we might sort of think about some other way in which we might do that. Although, to be fair, I mean, aid is right, it doesn't come very high on the list. The tricky thing for me is the things which are high on the list are the things which are really quite sort of time consuming, but aid, um, Adam suggested a way forward on one of them. I'm happy to run with the water tap thing for you because that's very simple. You know, there's there's, there's a, a, a you know a, a group that promote these things, and it's it, it looks very simple. Okay, all right, great. We'll have to we'll have to leave it there at that stage. I'm afraid. Thank you, um, Dulford Traffic Report. Next steps. Um, this is really Adam and Chris. Where are you, Chris? Do you want to start? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Um... So, yep, I've been in contact with Darren, um, P, uh, PC Darren England. Um, as soon as he gets the go-ahead, he's going to come out to, um, to Dulford. Uh, I have a, um, I now have a comprehensive list of everyone that's interested uh, in actually taking up the training for Speedwatch. There's a few people that were missing IDs and Darren is going to be looking into that as well. Um, so from, yeah, from Dulford's end, it looks like that's, yeah, going in the right direction. Okay, just to bear in mind, he's a PCSO, which is not quite a PC. Ah, okay. And, uh, and also, apparently only a sergeant can license members of the public to use a speed camera. Yes, he said that he's waiting to get the go-ahead before he can begin, so I, I, I assume that he's going to have to wait to hear back from your sergeant then. The sergeant we ended up with was one that hadn't been speed camera trained, so he's got to be trained first. Before right, okay, so... Him. How many people did you get? How many people have you got as volunteers? Uh, let me just look at the list a moment. Just roughly. Um, it's, it's, around, it's around about 14. That's very good. That yeah. is good. Yeah. Okay, well, as soon as they're able to come out and you can get those people together, go ahead and do it. You're going to have to put okay. some pressure on, on Darren because he only responds... Well, he only responded to me because we wrote to the police and crime commissioner, but that's perhaps a bit heavy on this. So okay. we just need to keep the pressure on. And then Adam and Chris, Adam, you attended, uh, I think, two of the meetings. And I think the plan is that when we can, we're going to get as many of the big players together as possible and try and pressurise them on the other issues which the community want. I think that's the plan, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what we talked about. Yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, Neil Parrish and the chap from uh, Devon County on the highways. Yeah, that, that's that's good. I'm happy to help with um, Speedwatch as a volunteer if um, if required, just just so I know what's going on. But, um, okay. Yeah. These Speedwatch people realise they get stuff thrown at them, don't they, Chris? Yeah, I think they're all aware of it. They have. They, we, we had a. Um, I think at the the Dulford meeting, which Adam was um, came to as well. I think a lot of them did voice the uh, voice their knowledge of having things thrown at them previously. So yeah, I think they're aware of it. <laughs> okay. So can you, Chris? Can you report back to Bronwyn? Say we've where we've got to. Yes, yeah, sure. So we're ready to help you activate the big meeting. Yes with all those key players to try and get some of the more, the bigger things that you want. Yes. Okay. We'll do. Um, there was, um, with the Dulford speed, there was the, uh, well, it was reported um, that the Dulford, um, welcome to Dulford sign had been damaged. Um, it has been taken away, but um, since then there doesn't seem to have been any other further action. Um, I don't know if that links into the whole Dulford speed thing at the moment. Well, we've we've had um we've had an offer from highways to repair it if we pay three hundred pounds and that doesn't include labour. Yeah. Now, Nick, you said that you might have known who damaged it, in which case we can go and ask the person. I I know a man who knows who's damaged it, put it like that. So <laughs> leave me to do some homework. Can I leave you to do your sleuth sleuth work on that? Yeah, my main resource of the pub is shut. Okay. I don't know what his dog looks like. It'd be all right. 
Okay. Um, I'll, I'll find out for you later. But I know the guy comes from Witheridge, but he was an elderly gentleman at the time, so he could be well and true, he could be dead by now, but he was in his late 80s then, but we'll see. Chris, to be honest, £300 for a sign to a hamlet, plus the costs of putting it up, is quite steep for us. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the first time we've ever been asked to do it because other signs have appeared. Highways assure us that we've always been doing it, which is complete rubbish because we haven't. So the danger is, you know, how much would it cost to put up a number of signs or a bigger sign? You know, we could, we could be on a slippery slope here of doing all kinds of stuff that highways have palmed off on us. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering... If, if somebody's still got the sign, if somebody banged two fence posts in the ground and tied it to it, would they then come along and change it because it didn't look right and then they pay for it? So it's only cost you two fence posts in, the, in 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, well, have we still got the sign? Um, the sign has been taken. It was reported to Devon Highways, I believe, and they turned up and, and took it away. We'll ask uh, it back. Okay, so one, one option down the track, Nick, after you've done your work, we'll ask for Devon Highways for it back and we'll put it up ourselves on two posts. Yeah. Got five quid job done. I can find some stakes done. Yeah, okay. See what happens. Yeah. Okay. That's sign, that's Stelford Traffic and Sign. Uh, the audit report, because our income for the year is less than 25,000, uh, we have to do the audit in this particular way. And you've had the documents in front of you. My thanks to Keith, who obviously prepared it, but also to Edwina and Sue Middleton, who checked over the data and the arithmetic, uh, and also to uh, Alison Chapel, who is our internal auditor. If you've all seen this, I need your formal approval to sign the document and return it. Or I need anyone to say now, or wave your hand if you're un unhappy. Yeah, the only, well, not really unhappy. The only thing I would say, I say it every year, is, is, is the line item for fixed assets. Um, I've never seen a breakdown of that. Um, I, it just might be interesting to know what, you know, what we've got that tops up to 106 grand and uh, ought we to change it? Aid, I've got the answer to that because, um, it's always, it's been 106,000 for about 20 years. And when we asked if we could change it, they said, no, you've got to leave it as it is. <coughs> Who said that? Well, we went to the audit people that we send this to. That's the formal body that sets this up. We took advice from NALC. This, Keith, this was a couple of years ago. Do you remember? Yes, I remember it well. So in the end, that's fine. Let's just leave it 106,000. But it's meant to be the land on which the, the hall sits and the car parks, although it was set at 106,000 when the car park was a third of the size. So, you know, it's, it's a stupid figure. Right. But yeah, to be, on, to be honest, if we try changing it now, we'll have all kinds of problems. There's the odd bench, you know, and that sort of thing. It's trivial little things added on to it. Yeah. Uh, I will say, Bob, that there's actually... Um, nowhere in the documentation to itemize it on the on the e-registration that we're doing now there's actually nowhere where we can break that down no that's true so there might have been a breakdown once aid but there isn't any more and we can't change it i'm afraid and, and if nobody asks then yeah so be it yeah so just for summary, back to the point you were talking about, Viv, earlier, we're carrying forward 13,500 into the current year. And in addition, we're collecting eight and a bit thousand in uh, just slightly over 8,000 in preset. Do we have a lot more money in, in, in income yep. this year from other receipts? That would seem to have jumped Yeah, out. that's what I was going to ask. Okay, well, that was, that was mainly the grant that we got for the electric vehicle charging. Right. Okay. It would be, I, I know this is an official <coughs> form, but it would be quite nice if there was another column where you or Keith could just add a little bit of rubric that explains what these items are. Because I questioned that or wondered about that as well. Okay. Um, 
Edwina and Keith, I think you know this, Sue has done an annotated copy, hasn't she? Yeah. Which we could just supply to parish councillors. Edwina, go ahead. She needs to unmute. Um, yes, she has. And also Keith's books are there for anybody to uh, look at. I make up the cash book each year and then hand it over to the internal auditor, as the chairman says, it's Alison Chapel. She ticks on and puts the odd thing in that I've forgotten um, and then hands over to Edwina and Sue to put it on the net. So that you... grant for the car came after the 1st of April then, did it? What was that, Ed? The grant for the car came after the 1st of April. That was quite late, wasn't it? I can't tell you the dates everything came up, I'm afraid. But that year, yeah. I can look it up. No, uh, from memory, they did take it. Did take it. Did it did come? It did come very late, actually. Yeah. And in fact, one of the complicated issues is we issued the check to the people, but they didn't get the check, so the check had to be stopped, and then we had to issue another check, which was then in another accounting period. So, I think Keith, I think it might be quite helpful. I don't know if you want to give this a try. If you just did a little annotated copy against each of those ten lines for people to yeah. say, you know, this is made up of A, B, and C. Yeah. Uh, and also you might want to touch on how you and Sue and Edwina have creatively dealt with the 30 pounds this year to just, yeah. you know, yeah. to incorporate it properly into the accounts. And there is also some rounding involved. Viv, yeah. Yeah, it's just a general issue that if you ask us to approve some accounts, it's important that we actually know enough about them because I don't feel comfortable approving accounts I haven't really got much understanding of. Okay. So, what are you Keith, looking for, Viv? Well, what we were just talking about, Keith, yeah. some explanation of the line items. Yeah. Keith, have we got time uh, time to defer this until the next meeting? Yes, because of the situation countrywide, they've extended the deadline. So okay. If, our, if we have another meeting in July, it's normally planned, that would be fine. Okay. Well, then I won't take a vote on this now. We'll defer it to give people time to either ask. Keith or Edwina or I questions or for Keith to produce a, uh, a rubric which explains what the line items are. So I'll defer the signing of it. Is everyone happy with that? I think we've got time to do it. Um, now, the next item is the budget. I sent you a budget. And Keith and I compiled this budget. I went through the last year and a half of check stubs because we only do payments by check. So Viv, before you ask me, the budget is based on real data plus a little bit of plus a little bit of addition where we know things were changing. There are some things in there which are provisions for certain things, obviously, but I reckon that we would have an excess of about eight hundred pounds we could transfer to reserves on this budget. Anyone got any questions? One of the things we we could have discussed tonight, but it, oh yes, we're coming to that in a minute, is grants. We'll come on to grants. You'll see in the budget, there is a nominal provision of 500 pounds for grants. Uh, that was me just guessing what I thought we could reasonably afford. It bears no relationship to what everyone might want or what you might think we could afford, but it's just, an, just a nominal amount. Uh, we don't, we're not required to do this by law, but actually it seems a bit hard to set a precept each year unless we've got some idea as to what we're spending the money on. So I don't really think it would be due diligence to set a precept unless we had some idea of what the budget line items were. Viv, go ahead. Yeah, just, uh, just to help me, what's Step and tech equipment. Depreciation on technical equipment. So things like Keith's computer. Depreciation, right, yeah. Okay. I have no idea how long computers last, but this one's been going for the last 12, 13, 14 years. Yeah, well, it's way over its expected life. 
Okay, so um, the budget is just for information. It's not a for approval thing unless you're really concerned about a particular line item. Can I move on to grants? Um, we made a rule three years ago about grants that we would award a grant when we saw a copy of the, uh, the last available report and accounts from whoever was requesting a grant. Now, I under last year we awarded grants to TRIP and to Tail Valley Trust and to the Parochial Church Council. Keith, we have a request from the PCC, I think, don't we? It's the only request we have had meeting this council's requirement is the Parochial Church Council. Okay. Do we have their report and accounts? Um, no, because the accounts are not finished due to the present situation. But I did email through rather late, I'm afraid, I only got it today, um, the church council's uh, churchyard account, uh, which shows somewhere. But you, have, uh, you probably, I didn't send it on, I don't until four or five o'clock. I got it here in front of me. Okay, don't worry, Keith. I, I'm... I don't feel I can propose this without the data, I'm afraid, unless someone wants to separately do a proposal. I mean, very happy to take it at the next meeting, but we, we made a rule that we would see some data about the financial viability of the person who was seeking the accounts from us. Dan, were you waving your hand or someone else? Well, Mr. Chairman, I do have the churchyard um, accounts in front of, churchyard accounts in front of me. Yeah, that's okay, Keith, but we don't have them. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, was that what Keith said earlier that we gave him 350 quid last year, wasn't it? Yeah, we did. And it's got East Devon Grant of 439, donations nothing, graves 90, dividends and interest 89, and five pence. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Dan, are you all right? We've now got a dog on the screen. He was starting to whine at me at the back door. That was what I was waving my arms at. Okay, Sorry. okay, fine. Uh, well, we could have, presumably we could get that data by the next meeting, couldn't we, Keith? Um, you know, how long's a bit of string? I've got no idea when it will be done. They're, they're all gone from Port Henry, but they've got to be... Okay, well, the last set of accounts would do, Viv. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I've received the churchyard accounts that I've got in front of me from Keith this evening. Um, I'm not sure it tells us a great deal because it's a tiny little fun to do with grass cutting at the churchyard. It doesn't tell us how much the PCC has got. They could have millions aside. This is just how much they're putting aside for the churchyard. It doesn't really tell us a great deal. Yeah, we did get more last year. I'm sure we got more information last year. I mean, this one comes up every year and I, you know, I would be broadly happy to, uh, to, to support another, uh, pr to propose another grant uh for the churchyard but yeah it might be nice to see you know the full picture just in case they happen to have won the lottery i can't i can't support your proposal i'm afraid eh? we must have this this data that's the agreement we made we really should have the data and just looking i'm looking now at the churchyard grants thing that's only part of what we need we need the full accounts for the parochial church council and last year's would do they don't have to be this year's yeah, I mean, that's what I said. We had more information last year. So if we, we got the same have, amount of you know, information have, as we did last year. I still have last year's um, accounts, as you all had, because it's all sent to you. So if you're asking for that one, sort of you've already had it. So I don't see the point really in getting last year's for you to see a second time, do you? Uh, Keith, I'm sorry, it wasn't sent out for this meeting, so I'm closing this item. It's just, we really have to do due diligence. If we're going to pay grants to people, we have to do due diligence. It's in the local authority regulations. This isn't due diligence, so I'm not going to discuss the item any further. I'm sorry, unless someone wants to take over the chair. I'm sorry to be so stroppy about this, but we have this debate every year, and I made it clear how I would handle the debate a year ago. So you're completely out of order. The next item is the ROSPA reports. Dan. Tell me about, there are two things in the ROSP, I mean, there is a lot of stuff in here which we can't really get too concerned about, but there are two things in here for the Broad Henry one. One is the slide, and the other is they don't like your little house. There's um, things with that that they've picked up that we're going to have to see if we can amend and, uh, you yeah, know, fall in line with 
what they've raised and the slide seems to be coming up with things again and again. We've, we've asked, or well, one of our committee members was engaging uh, a, a playground maintenance company. This was several months ago now, but she hasn't actually come back with any kind of report to us from uh, what was, I, I believe she's met them at playground, but I haven't had any information back. So I need to follow that up. Because I know it's came, yeah, the, the same items came up last year with the, um, the corrosion and the entrapment, and having replaced the bark chips with topsoil and, and turf, they're saying that that's not actually sufficient with uh, one and a half meter fall height. So we need to have a, a discussion about whether it's sort of heading for time for the slide to actually be replaced, or is there any way we can get around the, the hazards? And risks that have been highlighted. Um, Dan, one of the ways we dealt with this last year was to top up the bark chips to a really almost a swimming pool height actually you know they, they were they were you had to wade in them. Yes but they, we still had protruding um, concrete foundations from the stanchions the steel stanchions okay. so when we when we because we were spending a sort of significant amount of our money's yearly on topping up bark chips which just get scattered around the place and basically rot down um, it was agreed that we would we'd seen you know soil and turf you know, grass surfaces beneath playgrounds uh, facilities and other places and thought that would be sufficient but because we've got this fall height of 1.5 meters that's fallen outside of the uh, the standards, unfortunately. So whether we can build the, the ground up further to reduce the fall height, which will satisfy the standards, because we've taken the bark chips out from the slide area, topsoiled it and turfed it, and we put the chips into the area around the swings to avoid having to, to buy more. Well, had um, Dan, do you want to have a think about it? Because actually the potential risk score on the swings on that item is not is not too bad. It's more to do with the slide. Yes. But if we can demonstrate that we've taken, you know, all reasonable action to make the point within the within the sort of scheme of work, particularly on the slide, those uh, worn chain links. Yes. Which That's actually the, the, came, the, came up. The corrosion and entrapment and the uh, the swing wear were, were items we were specifically looking to engage the maintenance contractor for, but we haven't got any uh, response or quotation for any uh, remedial works or maintenance works yet. So I apologise for not having chased that up. No, tonight. that's all right. That's okay. Um, the playhouse, which is something new, it, it looks from the photos that the Rosberg guy took in March. It looks kind of unfinished. Yes, it, it looks like it, it's kind of some snagging works, really, that just need to be attended to. But there's also the risk, some entrapment locations. The turfing has actually been replaced by the thatchers in the village in the last week or so. Brilliant. Um, the chamfers to the timber edges are you know, an easy job to complete. The okay. was a low risk score. So, okay. Well, Dan, can I can I leave it to you to think about those three issues? Um, yeah. As it happens, we do have a bit of time at the moment because the playground is closed, so the risk is absolutely minimal. Yes. Um, Keith, on the Kurzweil playground, I'm a bit uncomfortable that we don't. I know Alan Muggleston has done stuff from time to time but we don't have a parish councillor who takes on this responsibility, do we? No, and I'm not quite sure um, whether there is an official chairman of the Curzville Play Area. I think Alan Muggleston is sort of doing it out of the goodness of his heart, but, um, you know, this was from Val Jones when they were there. Okay, well, I have a proposal which will either produce for all time an answer on this or make cause people to come forward to help. I suggest we write to all Kurzweil residents and say we're closing it down and see what happens. I, I'm, I realise you'll think that's a little bit radical, but, you know, we're liable. We pay for the Rosper report. 
I'd be really surprised if anyone uses it. We've got no one who takes any interest in it. No. I'm sorry I to be really so. I don't know if it is used particularly. First of all, I can now ask Alison Chapel when I see her. So, <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you've found the symbols, don't start doing the virtual background, please. That will take us to a completely different place. Um, so if you're happy, I'll try and compile with Keith a carefully worded letter to everyone in Kurzweil saying, you know, we have this dilemma. We need someone to step up to do what Dan has done and form or keep a committee going of people who are interested in using it. And if there are no children who use it, and no parents of children who want to use it, then we don't even have a proper rental agreement with the person whose land it is, as we do with Mike on the Broad Embry one. No, we don't. I mean, it's... I, it's really makes me feel uncomfortable this one so I think we need to tackle it so I think we'll do it that way okay great thank you AOMB uh, let me go around the squares as I've got you aid anything Edwina Keith no uh, Nick Chris Viv uh, Adam, you look as if you've gone into night mode. Adam? <laughs> uh, just a point. I had a look at the um, the wild flower bank we um, seeded in the autumn, and I'm a little bit disappointed that only one of the four species has come up. Um, so I'm going to sort of contact the seed company and see, uh, just tell them what's happened. And Yeah, but the one that has come up, Adam, hasn't it done well? It's done well, but it's um, a bit of a monoculture, really. It's thing is it's it's higher than the other ones would have been so it's it's swamped what would have been there so I'm a bit disappointed and um, I looked at the seed mix this evening so I, I'm just going to take it up and see if we can get any information on that because um, we've got to see what happens next in the autumn yeah okay seed in the autumn. So I'll uh, yeah, you and I were going to talk about something else there anyway which I've forgotten to do with you so we'll, we'll do that um, yeah. Dan any points we've I meant to mention with the playgrounds, we have had a no dogs, you will be fine sign that's appeared on the gate at the playgrounds, which people do not find particularly um, aesthetically pleasing and also possibly at um, sort of contravention with East Devon conservation as they frown upon any modern signs in the village. So I was wondering if we can remove it or if we're within our rights to remove it and replace it with a more in keeping a softer sign you know, adding no no dogs. Well, I would have thought so. We need to, we need to be clear that dogs can't go in the playground, but it needs to be aesthetically yeah. conservation friendly, doesn't it? Village, yes. Yeah, sure. Do you need to come back to us on a price? Um, I'll have, yeah, we'll have a chat about what we can get done and uh, let okay. everyone know. Okay, Dyer, anything? Just to say that um, when we went into lockdown, um, I had an email from Ros Davis, who is in charge of um, paths um, and um, right, public rights of way with East Devon. Um, she says we're not allowed to arrange our own mowing and grass cutting and tree felling. And so everything is going to take a little bit longer to um, put straight if there's a difficulty. So if people do raise um, issues with you, can you, first of all, ask them to let me know? Um, and secondly, reassure them that um, it will be done, but it's not going to be done as quickly as perhaps it would be when Eric was doing it. Why are we not allowed to do it now? I think it's got something to do with proximity to members of the public, PPE, um, and just petty bureaucracy, I'm sure. Um, what I have asked her is to um, reassure me that there won't be any cost implications for us. Um, she hasn't done that. Um, and I've got a couple of trees up at Stafford Hill which need to be cut down, which she's acknowledged. But in her acknowledgement, she didn't say it'll be free to the parish, East Devon are covering, bearing the cost. So um, okay. I need that clarified. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll take if Rob, Mike, Sarah, since you've been kind enough to join us in this brand new exciting mode, I'll take any questions on anything you think we should have talked about or anything you want to ask us from any of you. Mike? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm just still getting used to this. It's the first time I tried it, but um, 
Well, the picture looks, looks picture, like picture, picture, picture looks good. Does it? Oh, yeah. yeah. How do you like my hair? You know. <laughs> Never mind, to... Mike. You want to look at Adrian's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Really good. I look forward to another go on it on Thursday. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us, everyone, and well done on doing this. I think it worked really well. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. And good night. Thanks, Aid. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 <laughs>